As we look at Mars, we realize that if we want to go there, we have to eat. And we're not going to carry all the food with us for years of travel. We're going to have to grow it. So we decided this summer to experiment with what will grow as well or better in Mars soil than in Earth soil. Therefore, we picked two different soils. One of them is normal potting soil that you can buy at the store, because that's what you normally start plants in. Then we took some Mars soil. It's different, it really feels very different. Now this soil is in water right now because before we use it, we have to drain off the perchlorates that can, are normally found in Mars soil, or, and they will kill the plants. So that's something that has to be done. Now, our Mars soil is actually real stuff. It's produced from Earth material, but according to what NASA says Mars soil will be like, what it has in it. And this soil is as close a copy as we can make, so the extent to which it succeeds or fails gives us an idea of what's going to work on Mars. For the experiment, we took science fair uh, winners and asked them to do an experiment for us this summer. So I'm going to introduce them to you and talk about, and they'll talk about what they discovered and how they discovered it. I'll start with Emerald. All right, so for our first experiment, we planted pre-grown plants that were tomato, bell pepper, green okra, and basil. And we planted these because they're commonly used in the kitchen. So as you can see in the Martian soil, we actually have a tomato growing. And this was really surprising to us because we thought that the plants were gonna not thrive as well in the Martian soil, but they actually are doing quite well. And you can see comparatively, although there's yellowing in both, there's significantly more yellowing in the Martian soil. And this furthers our uh, thoughts that in order to grow things on Martian soil, we need to have some sort of fertilizer or something to help support the plants growing so that in uh, potting soil, there's already a lot of nu nutrients that is lacking in Martian soil. All right, so in addition to planting pre-grown plants, we decided to plant some seeds because since we are going to be traveling to Mars, it's going to be very difficult to carry pre-grown plants, but seeds are small and compactable and you can carry them anywhere. So these are our seeds that we decided to grow. And these are the carrots and in all of the front ones, those are all the potting soil. And as you can see, they are doing significantly better compared to the Martian soil. However, there are still some seeds, for example, in the carrots that actually are growing in the Martian soil. And this is really exciting because it shows that there's a possibility of plant growth from seeds on Mars soil. Emerald's team really got things going with the different plants and even the seeds. However, we wanted to do some more experiments on what we might do with Mars soil that would make it even better, could perform better with the plants. Nandini is going to talk about what the next team took over and how we've made the Martian soil even better. In experiment number two, we wanted to start with some more hardy vegetables. And we used potato, sweet potato, and squash. This was the potting soil and this was the Mars soil. And it, you can definitely tell that the plants are doing better in the potting soil than the Martian soil. This is because most of these plants need more uh, moist soil and the Martian soil drains really easily. So it doesn't hold the water that it needs. So we tried to figure out some ways that this could be fixed. So for some things that we could change, we wanted to take some squash and put cardboard in between the layers of the soil. Because like I said, Martian soil does not hold water as well as potting soil. And the squash needs that, uh, needs the moisture to grow properly. So when we did that, the uh, squash is actually looking almost as good as in the potting soil because of the moisture it's retaining. But the soil over here is not helping the squash and it's looking a little bit sad. We, in, we were inspired by the movie The Martian and we cut a, a sweet potato in half let it grow some roots for two weeks in water, and we put, uh, planted it in the Martian soil to see if it would grow. We don't have any results yet, but we're hoping it'll work. Another thing that we tried to do is we tried to add some nutrients that, I know, that we know that the plants need. And the Martian soil does not have it, and the potting soil has very little of it. So it's called NPK, and it stands for nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Those nutrients help the plants go big and strong, and they are very essential into making healthy plants. So we tried this with basil, okra, tomato, and sweet potato. 
We did this because the okra is, as you can see, is very yellow. And this yellowing is caused because of the lack of nitrogen in the soil, which NPK has. And also the basil and the tomato are really not doing well. They're turning yellow too. So we were just thinking that the nitrogen would help them. The sweet potato, as we saw earlier, is browning and turning yellow, and we're hoping that the NPK will help that a lot. After the normal plants that we thought we would need to eat on Mars, and how we could make Mars more likely to grow them, we decided to try some other things, things that might be more interesting and may give us some more clues about being a Martian farmer. Linda is going to talk about what she discovered about air plants. So air plants take a lot of things from the air, so the soil doesn't really matter much. So this means that both of the, all of the air plants have been doing good in both of the soils. And another thing is, is that these air plants won't really matter on Mars because you can't eat them, right? So just for fun, we decided to do some cacti. So first we started with succulents and they're actually doing better in Martian soil than Earth soil. Then we decided to do some other cacti and they're doing about the same, which I mean, to be expected because we didn't think that there would be that much of a change. And then we just decided to do some other cacti that we could possibly get prickly pear juice from and eat, but you can't really get much from cacti, so it was just for fun. Our best data ever came from a Venus flytrap. It turns out that Venus really doesn't like Mars. They're just, it just, two weeks, it's gone. But the Venus flytrap is very happy, we think, or somewhat happy, still on Earth. What's most exciting about this is that you can grow stuff in Mars soil. We were very afraid you couldn't. We had to treat it a bit with water first to get rid of the perchlorates, but we have plants growing. Now, the ones that are not growing as well, we're trying to fix it. Like the cardboard, we figured you'd take cardboard with you to Mars to carry stuff in, so we'd already be on the ship. So in every instance, we're trying to make Mars a better place for us to go and to eat. And the little experiments we're doing, even though they may or may not have worked, are telling us more and more about what Mars is really like and how much we can survive and thrive there. This is Carolyn Sumners with her crew of Martian farmers from the Houston Museum of Natural Science, encouraging you to come see these plants in action and also to see our big new Mars exhibit.